Good evening, everybody. Uh, for several years now on Saturday nights, we've had a tradition the night before Easter of taking time intentionally to, to enter into the story. And the part of the story that's happening on Saturday night is everybody is grieving. Nobody knows yet what Easter morning is going to bring. And so hopefully several of you may join us in that this year. Um, but we're going to read through the Book of Lamentations together tonight. And I will bracket that at the start and the end with accounts from the Gospels of the burial. So I'm going to start off with the burial story from Matthew 27. And then we'll read through the Book of Lamentations together, uh, remembering Israel's grief at the loss, what they thought was the loss of everything. So Matthew 27, beginning in verse 57. Later that evening, a rich man arrived from Arimathea. His name was Joseph, and he had become a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and Pilate ordered it to be done. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. Then he placed it in his own new tomb, which he had cut out of the rock. After rolling a large stone across the door of the tomb, he left. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained there sitting in front of the tomb. The following day, that is after the day of preparation, the high priests and Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that imposter said while he was still alive, I will be raised after three days. Therefore, order the tomb to be secured until the third day, or his disciples may go and steal him and then tell the people he's been raised from the dead. Then the last deception would be worse than the first one. Pilate told them, you have a military guard. Go and make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and secured the tomb by putting a seal on the stone in the presence of the guards. Lamentations 1. How lonely she lies, the city that's thronged with people. Like a widow, she has become this great one among nations. The princesses among provinces have become a vassal. Bitterly, she cries in the night, as tears stream down her cheeks. No one consoles her of all of her friends. All her neighbors have betrayed her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile to escape affliction and servitude. She that sat among the nations has found no rest. All her pursuers overtook her amid narrow passes. The roads that lead to Zion are in mourning because no one travels to the festivals. All her gates are desolate, her priests are moaning, her young women are grieving, and she is bitter. Her adversaries dominate her, her enemies prosper, for the Lord has made her suffer because of her many transgressions. Her children have gone away, taken into captivity in the presence of the enemy. Fled from cherished Zion are all that were her splendor. Her princes have become like deer that cannot find their feeding grounds. They flee with strength exhausted from their pursuers. Jerusalem remembers her time of affliction and misery, all her valued belongings of days gone by, when her people fell into enemy hands with no one to help her, and her enemies stared at her, mocking her downfall. Jerusalem sinned greatly, and she became unclean. All who honor her now despise her, because they saw her naked. She herself groans and turns her face away. Uncleanness has soiled her skirts, and she gave no thought to what would follow. She fell in such a startling way with no one to comfort her. Look, Lord, upon my affliction, because my enemy is boasting. The adversary seized in his hands everything she valued. She watched the nations enter her sanctuary, those you forbade to enter your place of meeting. All her people groaned as they searched for food. They traded their valuables in order to eat to keep themselves alive. Look, Lord, see how I have become dishonored. May it not befall you, all who pass along the road. Look and see, is there any grief like my grief doth out to me, by which the Lord afflicted me in a time of his fierce wrath? He sent fire from on high, making it penetrate my bones. He stretched out a net at my feet, forcing me to turn back. He made me desolate. I'm fainting all day long. The yoke of my sins was bound on. Fastened together by his hand, they settled on my neck. He caused my strength to fail. The Lord placed me in the power of those I cannot resist. He rejected all the valiant men, the Lord in my midst. He set a time to meet with me to crush my young warriors. 
The Lord is trampled as in a wine press, the fair virgin that is Judah. Because of all this, I weep. My eyes stream with tears because far from me is the comfort of my soul. My children are sorrowful because the enemy has won. Zion spreads out her hands. No one is there to comfort her. The Lord has issued an order against Jacob that all who are around him are to be his enemies. Jerusalem has become unclean among them. The Lord is in the night. The Lord is in the right, but I rebelled against his commands. Listen, please, all you people, and look at my pain. To my young women and men have gone into captivity. I called out to my lovers, but they deceived me. My priests and my elders have died within the city while looking for something to eat to keep themselves alive. Look, Lord, how distressed I am. All my insides are churning. My heart is troubled within me because I vigorously rebelled. Outside, the sword brings loss of life while at home, death rules. People heard how I groan with no one to comfort me. All my adversaries have heard about my troubles. They rejoice. You've, they rejoice that you have caused them. Bring on the day that you've promised so my adversaries will become like me. May all of their wickedness come to your attention and deal with them as you have done with me because of all my transgressions. For I'm constantly growing, groaning and my heart is faint. How the Lord in his wrath shamed cherished Zion. He cast down from heaven to earth the glory of Israel, did not remember his footstool in the time of his anger. The Lord swallowed up without pity all of Jacob's inhabitants. In his wrath, he tore down the strongholds of fair Judah. He cast to the ground in dishonor both her kingdom and its rulers. In his fierce wrath, he cut off all the strength of Israel. He withdrew his protection as the enemy approached. He burned Jacob like a blazing fire consumes everything around it. He bent his bow against us as would an enemy his right hand cocked as he would an adversary. He has killed everyone in whom we took pride. In the tent of cherished Zion, he poured out his anger like fire. The Lord has become like an enemy. He has devoured Israel. He has devoured all of her palaces, destroying her fortresses. He filled cherished Judah with mourning and lament. He plowed under his temple like a garden, spoiling his tent. The Lord abolished in Zion both festivals and Sabbaths. In his fierce wrath, he despised both king and priest. The Lord rejected his altar, disavowing his sanctuary. He gave up her palace walls to the control of the enemy. They shouted in the Lord's temple as though they were attending a day of celebration. The Lord planned to destroy the walls of Cherish Zion. He measured them with his line, did not withhold his hand from destruction. He made both ramparts and defense walls mourn. They languish together. Jerusalem's gates collapsed to the ground. He destroyed and broke the bars of her gates. Both king and prince have gone into captivity. There is no instruction, and the prophets receive no visions from the Lord. The leaders of cherished science sit silently on the ground. They throw dust on their heads and dress in mourning clothes. The young women of Jerusalem bow their heads in sorrow. My eyes mourn out from crying. My insides are churning. My emotions pour out in grief because my people are destroyed. Children and infants faint in the streets of the city. They ask their mothers, is there anything to eat or drink? They faint in the streets of the city like wounded men. Their lives ebb away while they lie on their mother's bosom. What can be said about you? To what should you be compared, fair Jerusalem? To what may I liken you so I can may comfort you, fair one of Zion? Indeed, your wounds is as deep as the sea. Who can heal you? Your prophets look on your behalf. They see false and deceptive visions. They do not expose your sins in order to restore what has been captured. Instead, they crafted oracles for you that are false and misleading. Everyone who passed by on the road shake their fists at you. They hiss and shake their heads at cherished Jerusalem. Is this the city men used to call the perfection of beauty? the joy of the entire earth. All of your enemies insult you with gaping mouths. They hiss and grind their teeth while saying, we have devoured her completely. Yes, this is the day that we have anticipated. We found it at last, we have seen it. The Lord did what he planned. He carried out his threat. Just as he commanded long ago, he has torn down without pity. He let the enemy boast about you and has exalted the power of your enemies. 
cry out from your heart to the Lord, wall of fair Zion. Let your tears run down like a river day and night. Allow yourself no rest and don't stop crying. Get up and cry aloud in the night. At the beginning of every hour, pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards him for the lives of your children who are fainting away at every street corner. Look, Lord, and take note. To whom have you done this? Should women eat their offspring, the children they have cuddled? Should priests and prophets be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? Young men and aged lie in the ground in the streets. My young women and young men have fallen by the sword. You killed them in your anger, slaughtering them without pity. You've invited those who terrorize me to come around as if today were a festival. No one has escaped or survived the time of the Lord's anger. My enemy has finished off those whom I cuddled and raised. I am the man who has seen affliction. Under the rod of his wrath, he has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. It's not going. I am the man who has seen affliction. Under the rod of his wrath, he has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. Surely against me he turns his hand, and again and again the whole day long. He has made my flesh and my skin waste away. He has broken my bones. He has besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me dwell in darkness like the dead of long ago. He has walled me about so that I cannot escape. He has made my chains heavy, though I call and cry for help. He shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my ways with blocks of stones. He has made my paths crooked. He is a bear lying in wait for me, a lion in hiding. He turned aside my steps and tore me to pieces. He has made me desolate. He bent his bow and set me as a target for his arrow. He drove into my kidneys the arrows of his quiver. I have become the laughingstock of all peoples, the object of their taunts all day long. He has filled me with bitterness. He has sated me with wormwood. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, my endurance has perished. So has my hope from the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is, it is good. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let him sit alone in silence, for the Lord has laid it on him. Let him bury his face in the dust. There may yet be hope. He will endure being slapped in the face, bringing him public disgrace. Indeed, the Lord will not always reject us. Though he causes grief, his compassion abounds according to his gracious love. For he does not deliberately hurt or grieve human beings. When any of the prisoners of the earth are crushed underfoot, when a person's rights are perverted in defiance of the Most High, when a man is thrawed in his appeal, does the Lord condone it? Who can command and it happen without the Lord having ordered it? Do not both good and evil things proceed from the mouth of the Most High? Why should anyone living complain any mortal about being punished for sin? Let us examine our lifestyles, putting them to the test and turn back to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts and our hands to God in heaven. As for us, we have sinned and rebelled, but you have not pardoned us. Clothing yourself with anger, you pursued us. You killed without pity. You covered yourself with a cloud that prayer cannot pierce. You have reduced us to scum and garbage among, among the nations. All our enemies jeer at us with gaping mouths. Panic and pitfalls beset us, along with devastation and ruin. 
My eyes run with rivers of tears over the destruction of my cherished people. My tears pour down ceaselessly. I am far from relief until the Lord bends down to see from heaven. What I see grieves my soul because of all the young women of my city. My enemies hunted me like a bird, viciously and without justification. They dumped me alive into a pit, sealing me in with stone. Water closed over my head, and I said, I'm a dead man. I called on your name, Lord, from the depths of the pit. You heard my voice. Don't close your ear to my sighs and cries. You drew near when I called out to you. You said, stop being afraid. Lord, you have defended my cause. You have redeemed my life. Lord, you observed how I have been wronged. Now make your ruling in my case. You examined their plans for vengeance, all of their plots against me. Lord, you listened to their insults, all their plots against me, the whisperings of my opponents, their scheming against me all day long. Watch, whether they sit down or stand up, they mock me with their songs. Pay them back, Lord, according to their actions. Give them an anguished heart. May your curse be upon them. Pursue them in your anger and destroy them from under the Lord's heaven. How the gold has grown dim. How the pure gold is changed. The holy stones lie scattered at the head of every street. The precious sons of Zion, worth their weight in fine gold, how they are regarded as earthen pots, the work of a potter's hands. Even jackals offer the breast, they nurse their young, but the daughter of my people has become cruel like the ostriches in the wilderness. The tongue of the nursing infant sticks to the roof of its mouth for thirst. The children beg for food, but no one gives to them. Those who once feasted on delicacies perish in the streets. Those who were brought up in purple embrace ash heaps. For the chastisement of the daughter of my people has been greater than the punishment of Sodom which was overthrown in a moment, and no hands were wrung for her. Her princes were purer than snow, whiter than milk. Their bodies were more ruddy than coral. The beauty of their form was like sapphire. Now their face is blacker than soot. They are not recognized in the streets. Their skin has shriveled on their bones. It has become as dry as wood. Happier were the victims of the sword than the victims of hunger, who wasted away, pierced uh, the lack of the fruits of work. The hands of compelled children, they became their food during the destruction of the daughter of my people. The Lord gave full vent to his wrath. He poured out his hot anger, and he kindled a fire in Zion that consumed its foundations. The kings of the earth did not believe, nor any of the inhabitants of the world, that foe or enemy could enter the gates of Jerusalem. This was for the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests, who shed in the midst of her the blood of the righteous. They wandered blind through the streets. They were so defiled with blood that no one was able to touch their garments. Away, unclean, people cried at them. Away, away, do not touch. So they became fugitives and wanderers, people said among the nations. They shall stay with us no longer. The Lord himself has scattered them. He will regard them no more. No honor was shown to the priests. No favor to the elders. Our eyes have failed, ever watching vainly for help. In our watching, we watched for a nation which could not save. They dogged our steps so that we could not walk in our streets. Our end grew near, our days were numbered, for our end had come. Our pursuers were swifter than the eagles in the heavens. They chased us on the mountains. They lay in wait for us in the wilderness. The breath of our nostrils, the Lord's anointed, was captured in their pits. 
of whom we said, under his shadow. So the cup shall pass. You shall become drunk and strip yourself bare. The punishment of your iniquity, O daughter of Zion, is accomplished. He will keep you in exile no longer. But your iniquity, O daughter of Edom, he will punish. He will uncover your sins. Lord, remember what's happened to us. Pay attention and look at our shame. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers and our homes to foreigners. We are now orphans without fathers and our mothers are like widows. We pay to drink our own water and our own wood is sold to us at high price. Our pursuers breathe down our necks. And we are weary and there's no rest for us. We made a deal with the Egyptians and the Assyrians for the price of food. Our ancestors sinned and no longer exist, yet we continue to bear the consequences of their sin. Slaves rule over us, and no one delivers us from their control. We risk our lives to obtain our food, facing death in the desert. Our skin blisters as from an oven due to ravaging blasts of the famine. They have raped women in Zion, young women in the towns of Judah, princes they have hung by their hands, elders they have disrespected. Our young men must grind grain with a millstone and youths must stumble into the weight of wood. Our elders have ceased ruling at the gate. Our young men have abandoned their music. The joy of our hearts has ceased and our dancing has turned into dirges. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us because we have sinned. This is why our hearts faint and why our eyes grow dim. Because Mount Zion is desolate. Foxes roam around it. You, Lord, are forever. Your throne endures from generation to generation. So why have you completely forgotten us, forsaking us for so long? Restore us to yourself, Lord, so that we may return. Renew our days as before, unless you have utterly rejected us and are angry with us without limit. Later on, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because he was afraid of the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, and he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, the man who had first come to Jesus at night, also arrived, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 100 litra, which is about 75 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in linen cloths along with spices according to the burial custom of the Jews. A garden was located in the place where he was crucified, and in that garden was a new tomb in which no one had yet been placed. Because it was the Jewish preparation day, and because the tomb was nearby, they put Jesus there. So guys, as we close this time of reading together tonight, and, and just of hearing the word of God together, we live in a culture that likes to jump to the end. And I encourage us, part of the joy of Easter comes from having waited, from having been willing to wait in darkness, in sadness, in grief. And so I encourage us not to short circuit the process. Uh, Easter is coming, but today it's still Saturday. So I want to close this with prayer. And then, uh, it, Jared, is it possible to stop the recording at that point and let us just chat for a bit? Okay. So I'll close this with prayer, and then we'll hang out and chat, those of us who want to. Oh, Father God, you are the God who remains with us during our Saturdays of waiting and wondering and grieving. We're marked by the memory of Friday, and we look forward to the hope of Sunday. 
And Father, I pray that you would keep us from moving too quickly and hurrying too quickly out of the darkness. Help us to wait until we are interrupted by your life-giving grace. In the name of Jesus, who died and was raised for us. Amen.